hello and welcome to another video today I'd like to talk about a very interesting topic and it's about chewing and its importance so let's talk about chewing the author continues to do the experiment and had actually um, since 10 days where he began um, you know since 10 days ago he had 400 percent less snoring so snoring continues to decrease as he is nose breathing he has a blood pressure that's 10 points lower and literally um, no sleep apnea at all and um, he talks about how all the tenderizing and the cooking that he talked about before actually leads to air obstruction and blocked airways and he's, he mentions in this in the chapter on chewing that 1200 years ago the humans lived in southwest asia and in the fertile crest in eastern mediterranean where they gathered their, their food and began gr um, growing it and in these farming cultures we began to see crooked teeth and deformed mouths and 300 years ago this went viral so this crooked teeth and the, and deformed mouths some smaller mouths went viral and just increased so much more and the industrialization of food only made this worse and in 1730 right before the industrial revolution the average brit was five foot seven and a century later in the around in the 1800s when the industrial revolution was there it went lower to five foot five and and dental disease was very very common so literally this industrialized um um industrialized type of um society actually stunted our growth um, of the bones and um, and that um, led to lower height and all sorts of dental problems um, now the farming practices took over the world in around 1500 and the human population increased to 0 0.5 billion which is a hundred times more than it was at the dawn of agriculture so it it it, it literally um that's when it increased way more and that's when humans ate nothing but processed food milled foods and all refined and all that refined stuff right and so that's when it really started but even more during the industrialized time the author went to in this chapter he talked about how he went to ancient burial sites or ossuaries and flew to paris even to study skulls um, that were impacted and he did that in Rue Bonaparte which is in Paris where he where there was the grave where he went to with his guide and the ossuary or the quarry that they went to was made in limestone and a lot of these buildings were made of limestone there and and there were the people called the cataphiles that made many discoveries and the ossuary the, the, um, that the author's guide led him to where there were many victims of cholera and all of those people had crooked teeth obstructed airways and the same um, issues that the author talks about it that were happening in they were so common in the industrialized era because that's when these people were alive right um, and in 1930 there is a, a figure by the name of Weston Price and he was the founder of the National Dental Association and he attributed this this um, crooked teeth smaller mouth obstructed airways all those mouth and nasal and um, yeah all those issues in the face and in the mouth he attributed this to a vitamin deficiency um, that's neat that and how vitamins are important for the development of bones and he published his work in 1939 showing how these traditional foods people who ate them had no issues and people who ate more processed foods had the, these issues and loss in bone growth and he and the author notes that it's not really a vitamin deficiency although it may play a role Right, vitamins are important for bone growth, but the author mentions it's more to do has to do so with chewing and how less chewing leads to negative morphological changes. And Dr. Nayak, a, test, a Stanford nose doctor, found that five ten percent of his patients underwent this reconstructive nasal um, surgery that he often prescribes, no longer needed treatment, showing how surgery can sometimes work. But there, um, but there are a lot of downsides as well, and. And, and a lot of times the surgeons remove turbinates, which I discussed earlier are the structures covered in mucus that filter the air. So if you remove them, you get less air filtration. And one of um, Dr. Nayak's clients, Peter, had a 75% of his turbinates removed. And, and this, this has a name for it. It's called the empty nose syndrome. 
And one estimate is that removing the turbinates, which the surgery can do, can increase the risk of this, of this syndrome by 20%, right? And so you get difficulty breathing, poor sleep, and even depression. Now, the author suggests some things that can lead to this disruption, such as the uvula, which is the part in the mouth. I don't know if you guys can see me, but it's like... Uh, it's like the bat-like structure in the back of the mouth. And why is that important? Because if it's very um, visible, it means it's higher up, um, and that's a good thing. But what can sometimes happen, the uvula being not high enough and not visible, it can actually obstruct the airways. The second thing is the tongue overlapping the molars can also clog the throat, especially when you lie down in bed and when you, and when you sleep. The third thing is a thick neck, which can sometimes cramp the airways. And the last thing you can note is that a high muscle and fat content can also play a role. And in fact, a smaller mouth can increase the likelihood that all of these will obstruct the airway. The uvula, the thick neck, the tongue over the molars, the high fat content, all those things have a higher chance of playing a role in reducing airway flow and, and causing airway obstruction if the person has a smaller mouth. So in expanding the mouth is really the most important here. And the author mentioned some people who he talks about. Dr. Gelb is one of them who helped his patients with fatigue, headaches, and ear pain when biting, right? And of course, um, these are not so fun conditions. And he noted that CPAP for sleep apnea, as well as adenoid and tonsil removal, which 50% of, of Dr. Gelb's patients undergo, can all help temporarily. But the mouth is still too small. So even if you apply a CPAP machine or you remove tonsils and adenoids, you're still going to have a smaller mouth. And to address all these issues, to improve airway flow in the long term, you have to expand the mouth. That's how you're going to get a long term fix. And he told the author that in 10 years, no one will be using traditional or orthodontics, which actually you do teeth extractions and do and move them further back. But this approach actually, as I mentioned in just a bit later, make the mouth even smaller. While the goal is to make the mouth bigger. And in the in the 1900s, Robin um, actually used a monoblock device that increased the mouth by forcing the upper palate to grow outwards. So you're expanding the mouth. In 1859, Dr. Norman Gingsley built a device as well to move the jaw forward, and this creates room at the back of the mouth to open the throat. Theodore Belfort, who worked as a dentist in Vietnam in the 1960s with 400 um, soldiers and later with artists in New York, helped people rebuild bones in the mouth and face. And even, um, for example, for singers or people who had respiratory issues, he also uses monoblock-like device same idea right um, and here less bone in the skull means less um, um, chance that the tongue will droop back because by having less bones in the skull right what's going to happen is that the soft tissue is going to have no bone to hold it and it's going to droop um, so by increasing the bone you're going you're to get less obstruction and so the people breathe better in fact only after six months they had a lot of new bone and more open airways and he actually invented a home block um, home blocks as it's called device in 1990s to um, to expand his um, expand the, the mouth so Robin Gingsty and Belfort all had the same idea device to expand the mouth right um, and Robert Curcini traveled the world by 1974 and he showed the people who shift from hard to soft as people shift from hard to soft food, the face narrows, the teeth crowd, and the jaws, jaws become out of alignment. So all of these issues of expanding the mouth, you can use this block device, or you can properly chew, right? Um, and so, but regardless, in the 1940s and 50s, doctors were extracting teeth and moving them back using braces, but this made the mouths even smaller, as I mentioned, and that's when John Mew Come in, comes in and noted that these retractive orthodontics led to stunted mouth and facial growth. So they weren't really, really helping. And even breathing um, and, um, was, was impacted. And many studies were sh showing the negative effects of these traditional ret retractive orthodontics um, that are used right now, like the, right, the modern um, 
orthodontics. Although he served as the president of the British Dental Association, no one cared, and he was actually um, sued, right? Um, he was criticized greatly. But recently, a paper in 2018 shows hundreds of scientific references that support his research, that yes, these offered orthodontics that we consider are good, are actually making our mouths smaller. And as Dr. Gelb, who told the author that in 10 years, um, this will be, um, um, right, expanding the mouth will be the new normal. There's actually a professional organization called the Academy of Orofacial Myofunctional Therapy that is against the traditional approach. And there's gonna be a huge shift in 10 years that's gonna be not focused on extracting teeth and this recession of the teeth back, but rather on expanding the mouth because removing the teeth actually does the opposite effect. It makes the mouth smaller because by, by um, right, and making the mouth smaller, then vicious cycle makes the teeth even more crowded. And so the author actually went to Dr. Mew's home, actually to a, his castle, and saw various mouth expanding devices. And his son, Mike, who's Dr. Mew's son, so the other Mew, right, his son, told him about oral posture and how you have to breathe properly. And the ways of the lips sealed together, teeth slightly touching, right, in a in just a regular bite position and the tongue on the roof of the mouth right so really pushing the tongue the back of the tongue towards the back of the roof of the of the, of the mouth where the front teeth are just um, where the tongue ends just behind the front teeth and um, also when you see it you have to sit in a J shape versus an S shape right which can lead to the tongue going back and again you, you get the obstructed airway and so you pr um, proper posture when you sit so both proper posture in the mouth pushing that upper pushing the tongue across the the top palate as well as sitting more in a j-shaped position yes you can eventually curve in the small of the back when when you sit right you actually curve outward right into a j-shape but you don't you want your your head to be right over your shoulders you don't want to you know have a kink in your neck so you want more of a J shape versus um, this S shape. So you don't want a kink in your neck, you want the neck to be straight up, otherwise your tongue is gonna obstruct the airways and you're gonna cause a lot of problems to breathing. Um, and so um, regardless, 50% of the people anyways have this S shape posture, which is definitely not good for breathing. He also suggested that tongue thrusting, Mike also suggested that tongue thrusting exercises, which is what I just mentioned, directing the tongue to the roof of the mouth to expand the upper palate, right? That helps to really expand the upper palate. And this exercise was recognized as a mewing because the mews invented it. And you place the back of the tongue against the roof of your mouth and move the rest of the tongue forward just, just, just before the front teeth, just behind the front teeth, which is what I just mentioned. So what's the cool part about it? Well, we have studies which um, we have we, um, we have actually sutures, these structures which separate the bones, and these structures actually have stem cells and even these amorphous bl um, um, blanks, as the author calls them in the in the book, and they can both lead to bone and tissue growth. Pretty cool. These sutures, these stem cells, can actually make your bones grow right in these amorphous blanks that are found in these sutures and so we want to make these sutures build bone and the way to build more bone is by engaging a muscle or chewing muscle it's called a masseter it's located right here right just um the, it, it supports the back teeth and helps us chew and um and essentially um that's how Belfort's block, this homo block that Belfort used and helped so many of his, um, of his clients, the one he invented in the 1990s. Well, guess how they work? They engage the chewing muscle. In fact, most of, of these work that way, right? They engage the chewing, the, the chewing muscle and that's how you get the results of expanding your mouth. But after the Industrial Revolution, of course, eating the processed foods, our mouths sh shrank and our tongue weakened because we're eat, eating this soft food and that led to smaller mouth and crowded teeth, smaller and crowded teeth as well, right? Because we're eating 
we're, 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 we're eating these soft foods and our masseter is not engaged, our tongue weakens and we get a smaller mouth. So to really have a bigger mouth and to expand the palate, we want to engage that master muscle. Well, that's how important chewing is. It can literally expand your mouth and give you that proper jaw alignment. And so um, the author notes in his book, he literally added five pennies worth of bone to his right eye socket and cheeks and even added bone to his nose and upper palate and jaw after wearing this Belfort's uh, home block or Belfort's retainer for a year. And that allowed them to breathe a lot um, better because that of course expanded um, right his mouth and of course um, reduced the crowded teeth, expanded his mouth and of course a bigger mouth helps with breathing. So try it yourself and see how it works. And you may just grow more bone in the face and in your mouth as well. So try doing oral posture, chewing, and the mewing technique that we discussed earlier.